As Florida braces for its second major hurricane in less than two weeks, Vice President Kamala Harris is living it up on her New York City media tour. If he wins, God forbid, would you feel safe in this country? Would you stay in this country? Howard, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he does not win. Let's, um, Kamala, and I'm calling you Kamala, because for all of those who are mispronouncing it, I want you all to know how to say it. <laughs> I like candidates who show up for interviews. Just saying. <laughs> Would you like to have a beer with me so I can tell people what that's like? Time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so cheers. Okay, there cheers. You go. Joe Conscious, a Fox News contributor, he joins us now. Big picture, Joe. How did Kamala come off doing what I'm going to call comfortable interviews mm -hmm. at a time when millions of people are mere hours away from being anything but comfortable, having their entire lives upended in an instant? The optics are profoundly horrific, Todd. I mean, she comes across as an elitist doing a tour around New York City with her friends. And let's not call this a media blitz because these are not media people that she spoke to for the most part when we're talking about Colbert, when we're talking about uh, the view when we're talking about Howard Stern. And, and this is the quandary now, guys, for, the, for, for Kamala and her campaign. If you keep her in the so-called basement, then voters don't get to know her and the fear of the unknown becomes real. But if you put her out there, even in the friendliest of environments, she can't handle even the easiest of softballs for the most part. And after two days of Kamala Harris being the focus for once and Donald Trump not being the focus for once for the most part, this so-called media blitz was a net negative because the only clips that are making the rounds after the fact on social media to the tunes of millions of views show once again that Kamala Harris is all bubbles and, and no bath when it comes to substance. So uh, I, I think that the plan was, OK, let's put her in friendly environments and people will get to know her. But those environments like Colbert, The View, Howard, those are all people that are going to vote for Kamala Harris anyway. So I don't know what she gains at this point from doing those interviews. Now, 60 Minutes was a different story, however. Yeah, that was uh, that was a hard hitting one. And I was just looking up and you kind of have to laugh because all of this is so staged and scripted, Joe. And we showed yeah. the clip of uh, Kamala drinking the beer. And um, Stephen Colbert even said during the interview that he had to ask her and her team beforehand if she wanted to do that. And she requested Miller High Life. Why? Well, it's from Wisconsin, which is a swing state. So <laughs> it's all about politics uh, in the uh, uh, earlier that morning, she was on The View, and this is one of the moments that's really going viral on social media. It's one of the first questions that she was asked. Here's the question and how she answered it. Okay. If anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the work that we have done. So not a thing that comes to mind, Joe, on the same day that we find out that there's an Afghan national that, who came in on a special immigrant visa that was planning a terrorist attack yeah. on uh, Election Day. And also one of the other things about that is her whole campaign platform is that she's going to be a change candidate and she's a fresh face. But there she is saying that nothing comes to mind on if she would do anything different over the last four years. Boy, Carly, it would be quite the irony if we look back in this campaign if Kamala Harris loses, that the moment the campaign truly went south happened on all places, the view. I mean, let's underscore this. No Democrat candidate or politician has ever screwed up an interview on that program because the confines are that friendly to any member of that party. And somehow the vice president still screwed it up in the most craptastic fashion one could imagine. That T-ball question, would you do anything differently from the past four years? There's a dozen ways to answer that question safely, but, but Kamala Harris's internal CPU, that is her brain, was not programmed to take this question. So the only thing she could spit out is that she wouldn't change anything for the last four years. Just 28% of voters in this country say the country is on the right track under Biden-Harris. That's according to Gallup. That ain't good, yeah. especially when it comes to inflation, wages, crime, border, foreign policy. And her argument is that everything has gone according to plan. And I would do the same thing all over again if given the opportunity. That's a campaign ad I, I, for Trump. And then 30 minutes mouth. later, guys, and I'll leave it here. She, somebody must have gotten her ear because 
uh, they said, you better revisit that answer. So she repeated the question back that she got 40 minutes beforehand and said that, yeah, the difference between Joe Biden and me is that I would add a Republican to my candidate, which I guess means say hello to Secretary of Defense Liz Cheney and your White House press secretary, Nicole Wallace. Uh, so that's that's what, what happened yesterday. And I'll, I'll leave it here, actually. Kudos to Bill Whitaker over at 60 Minutes, because for the first time, Kamala Harris actually took something called a tough question or two or three, and he also has follow-up questions. I never saw someone blink as much as Kamala Harris did during that interview, but uh, th that definitely did not yeah. go well. So the question is, do they put her back out there or do they bring her back in? There is no good option, it seems, at this point for her or for Tim Walls, for that matter. Yeah, not, not on 60 Minutes, I can tell you that much. Uh, New York Times yesterday says yeah. voters are increasingly viewing Kamala as the change candidate. To your point, Joe, if I'm Donald Trump, I just air that unedited clip to reverse that in response because I think that totally undermines what the New York Times is saying there. She ain't the change candidate if she just literally on the easiest platform possible says, Joe and I did everything together. That don't look good. That's right. Our Joe always looks good. Joe Concha, we appreciate it. Thank you, you sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.